Our next story comes from uh, from the BBC, but in particular from ancient Egypt, where the mm. recipe. And I've always wanted to know this. I mean, I've, you know, I've read some some books on ancient Egypt, and you know, I know about the hook in the nose and pulling, scrambling the brains, that kind of thing. But the recipe for actually how to embalm and mummify someone uh, has been figured out based on research. Um, uh, of uh, corpses, of, well, mummified corpses dated to 3700-3500 BC, uh, and uh, the, the the chemical analysis of these of these remains has resu- resulted in, uh, well, a, a, a battery of forensic uh, chemical uh, uh, conclusions and essentially a recipe. So, do you want to know the recipe for how to make a mummy? Um. Yep. We, uh, sadly, we see plenty of roadkill around here. I could practice, so yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay. So, first of all, you take a, a plant oil, maybe like sesame seed oil. Do you have any sesame seed oil in the house? Uh, yeah, use it for cooking. Okay, excellent. Okay, and maybe rapeseed, might, that might work. You know, yep, yep, also use that for cooking, yep. Olive yep. oil? Yep, uh, yep. Okay. Bit, of, bit, of a, bit, bit of a waste, like it on bruschetta, but there we are. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or Greek salad. Mm. Uh, Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, <laughs> a balsam type plant or root extract uh, that may have come from bulrushes. Now, it's a bit harder to get your hands on, but I suppose you can. I don't know. You, do you get balsam extract in um, in some some loo roll, don't you? Uh, and, and also, I think some health food shops and. Um, yeah, people who do sort of natural uh, natural cosmetics and so on. So yeah, they're yeah. Pro- okay. probably yeah. good. Yeah. In yeah. fact, yeah. in fact, I know. Yeah, I, in fact, I know. A, I know a, um, a, a a person that does uh, na- uh, things like that for reenactors. So yeah, I'm sure that that can be sourced. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, a plant based gum, a natural sugar that maybe it may have been extracted from uh, acacia, uh, and I suppose in our case, I don't know. There's lots of. What Pine resin, yeah, res- do you think resin would do the job, maybe? Yeah. I mean, obviously, we're trying to come up with like a, a Northern European equivalent here of yeah. ramification. And yeah. finally, oh, oh, ah, no, it is different. Uh, although, because you can get, but well, just to go back a step, you can get gum, uh, or to stay on this step, you can get gum, chewable gum from trees in Northern Europe, can't you? So there's megalithic chewing gum out there, so you can get gum. But also, yeah. finally, crucially, the final step is, in fact, conifer tree resin. Oh, right, okay. Which is probably pine resin in this case. Yeah. Um, like, mixed into the oil, the resin would have given an antibact- uh, uh, given the oil antibacterial properties. Protecting... Presume you'd have to warm this up so you, it's, it becomes stirable, because the resin obviously is... Still... It's quite, yeah, quite hard, yeah. 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 Um, but actually, uh, the antibacterial properties actually protect the body from decay. And as the uh, one of the researchers, I think Dr. Buckley says, until now we've not had a prehistoric mummy that was actually demonstrate um, has actually demonstrated so perfectly through its chemistry the origins of what would become the iconic mummification process that we all know about. Now, obviously, I'm being a little bit tongue in cheek here. I, I think that there is skill involved in the application of this process. Uh, I, I mean, for example, it's 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 clear even from ancient Egyptian. Uh, archaeology that 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 they didn't always get this right either. You can't just take this recipe and mummify someone, can you? You can't. I mean, I guess the most famous mummy in the world is probably Tutankhamun, mm. and the moment you look into the background on that, what you might think is you know the perfect mummy, the mummy that inspired movies like The Mummy, yeah, yeah and yeah. so on. Um, but in fact. In whatever circumstances it happened, and they may be, you know, they may be, they, they may have been able to explain themselves. But basically, it looks like it was a pretty cowboy job, and mm-hmm. he ended up stuck to the bottom of the coffin to the extent he had to be chipped out <laughs> out Carter. Um, Sorry, which... so I'm just, I'm just laughing. I'm just imagining, you know, someone like stuck like chewing gum to the back of something. <laughs> It was it was no. almost like that. It's, it's yeah. this sort of thick, this thick black sort of um, goo that solidified mm. and stuck him to the bottom of the. Like of the, of the yeah. it, it, it was it was a bodge job basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, whether they had to do it in a hurry or they didn't get they didn't have the right ingredients to hand or or, or what, for whatever reason it happened. Mm. This well, very high status it's, person. It's, yeah. So it's always, know, it's, it's, it's always very, been part of the part of the mystery of of Tutankhamun as well, isn't it? It's always added to the the intrigue as well. Why why was it a botch job? Was it yeah. politically sensitive or something like that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm. that's yeah. right. And but I think what it points up in when we talk about this is that that you know that there, there is no such thing as a single mummification process. It's actually a cultural process that develops over a very long period of time. Mm. 
mm. and mm. becomes uh, and is also, uh, if, if my understanding is correct, it's scaled through the classes of Egyptian society. So that a, mm. uh, a, a working class, you know, stone carver will be buried in a very different way to a nobleman to a pharaoh. Mm, mm, um, mm. Uh, and, and obviously, we've got the, the, the famous instances of the mummified animals, of which there are, you know, there are estimated to have been millions. Yeah, um, who are being again mummified on a commercial scale, almost, well, and, and in many or what cases, now appear like a commercial scale. Yeah, well, well, and in many cases, uh, those animals would have been given priority uh, over over certain classes of human. You know, so cats, for example, uh, would be much more readily mummified um, than than a, than a, than the likes of you and I, shall we say? <laughs> but uh, but actually, the, the reason why why this story matters uh, is that actually the recipe, uh, although its application and the the nuance and the science of it uh, was always difficult to actually apply and would require great skill to do so, and also it comes with the in the context of being able to successfully remove things like brain matter and internal soft organs. Tissue, soft tissue organs and so on, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, uh, as Dr. Buckley said, that uh, this recipe was used for almost 2,000 years. Yeah. And and it's, it's, it's a very successful recipe. And that's why I found, I found this so exciting. Mm. And I think, as, as I say, as a kid, I would just love, I'd, I'd be trying to, trying to make, I'd probably end up with just like a bowl and like an action figure just covered in oil. Just sort of like, <laughs> I'm trying to mummify, you know, Spider-Man. I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of... But, but I think there's something about archaeologists um, and uh, and our colleagues who work with, particularly with, with, with human remains, and because the experimental archaeology gets really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I'm remembering a colleague, for example, who um, was um, cremating pigs Bronze Age style. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's because a pig is the closest to a human that they could practice, mm -hmm. they could work on uh, the Legally. temperatures in a Bronze Age <laughs> pyre and that kind of thing. Um, I'm sure, you know, they, I'm they, sure. They, they, do, they do some pretty interesting field work. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. I mean, it, if there weren't other attendant laws de in terms of how you're allowed to treat human remains in you know now i'm sure there would be archaeologists who would willingly give over their bodies to that sort of research but uh, I, quite, it, I quite i quite fancy i quite fancy the viking boat funeral actually not like the one yeah. they did in vikings that we reviewed or north uh, north men that we reviewed a few months back uh -huh, but uh -huh. uh, no, i think the, i think going off to to, to, to valhall and uh, on the boat with the blazing arrows is, <laughs> I, I, I could go for that now um i'll leave, also... leave my body for science and someone someone can arrange that for me absolutely yeah 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 just 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 have a note like you know Put on your forehead must be a bizarre, a bizarre, a bizarre disposal method. Um, but <laughs> uh, it's also worth mentioning. Actually, there were a couple of other very honourable mentions in terms of news stories coming out of Egypt this month. Yeah, and, and uh, I really wanted just to tag these on because they, they are worth touching on. Uh, on the eighteenth of August, um, it was announced that uh, uh, well, certainly, sorry, the BBC uh, found the story that uh, in ancient Egypt. Uh, a, some cheese had been discovered from an ancient yes. Egyptian context, a 3,200 year old uh, wheel of cheese. It was contained in broken jars and uh, and sadly probably wasn't edible. Uh, even though I'm, I'm sure some people would, would have liked to try. Uh, there was also the, the, the giant black sarcophagus. Which oh, this was the been... one that was going to bring about the zombie apocalypse when they opened it, wasn't it? Supposedly, yes. It was discovered in July in Alexandria, and uh, and people were, were were literally, yes, they were thinking it was it was going to be like the mummy, um, you know, the the, the undead is risen. Uh, yeah. But it just contained, I say, just contained. It contained three the remains of three uh, individuals, and also a lot of juice, shall we say? Uh, now, one report I set read suggested that that might have been leakage from Alexandria's perhaps less than efficient sewage system. Mmm. <laughs> now that may be gross, a gross distortion of what is probably you know the most efficient sewage system in, in, in Egypt. Um, but certainly uh, it, it, it did bring to, uh, bring to mind, didn't it, the, uh, the, the wonderful stories of, uh, of uh, mummy tastings in the 19th century in the um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the powdering of the yeah. Oh, That's yeah, it. Sort of, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, 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 yes. Wasn't it? Wasn't you, you you powdered the mummy and drank it as an aphrodisiac, didn't you? Yeah, right? yeah. And, ugh, ugh. Um, and finally, actually, the discovery of uh, of a new uh, ancient sphinx in Luxor, uh, 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 just uh, amongst a, a, 
a plethora of fines coming out of Egypt this summer. So, and, uh, and, and again, I think well, well two things. I, I mean, just about that, and I think you're quite right to to mention that those three stories. Um, uh-huh. and, 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 and obviously, the the, the black sarcophagus um, went international partly because it was such a striking discovery, and partly because of the new age and ancient aliens nonsense that was laid on top of it on the on, on the web. Um, it, you know, it rapidly became sort of fake archaeological news as well as archaeological news, and mm-hmm. you know, the, and it turns out actually the skeletons that are inside it are actually potentially sounds as though they're going to be. It's going to be a really interesting story they're going to have to tell. Apart from anything else, you've got more than one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think two things I I I pull out of those stories. First of all, um, it's really good that we're hearing about work from Egypt when obviously Egypt has been a very troubled country in many ways since 2011 and. Mm-hmm. And so, if, if you know, regular archaeology is is is, is happening, um, it probably always was happening. But it, you know, it's because stories like this are coming out, that, and that's and that that's good for everybody, mm-hmm. including obviously the the people of of Egypt, because uh, it's their it's their heritage, it's their culture. Um, but the um, the other point um, I think though is that again something that has been as well studied as, as Egypt has been. You know, it's been studied by European archaeologists and then latterly with, with Egyptian colleagues as well. Since, well, you know, most famously the um, the expedition, Napoleon's expedition in the late 18th century. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but it, there but are it still continues the, to have surprises. Yeah, it's there yeah. are still these surprises. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 